Hey guys, thanks for checking out the world of barbecue. My name is Jeff with Hallboy Barbecue. On this tips and tricks, I'm gonna show you guys how to fire up and maintain temperature with a charcoal smoker. We're gonna be cooking on the Big D's. Little Bastard today is what we call it. Actually, it was coined by either Brian or Daryl themselves. But anyways, uh, we're gonna cook on this guy today. We've got something going on, so uh, we're actually cooking for another video. Uh, and we're gonna do it on this. So, first thing I do is open up this charcoal, charcoal area to look at my basket. Ooh and ah at how much uh, charcoal it didn't take to keep it at temp uh, last time I used it. Um, so, this is Royal Oak charcoal that was left over from the last cook. Not a big deal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some gloves on and I'll move all this charcoal up against this wall of the charcoal basket. Let me make sure you guys can see that. Edit this out maybe. We'll see. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, I'm going to push all this up to here. A bunch of stuff's going to fall down. I'll sweep it all up. Who cares? You know, uh, this is just how I do it. You know, uh, you could probably even take this out and go somewhere with it, like over to the grass or something, and do all that in it. I don't care. So anyways, that's what I'm going to do first. So, I have these uh, crappy dollar store. Like I said, we're by my garage, so yeah, I have all the amenities of home. Um, have these crappy dollar store gloves that I use for all kinds of charcoal stuff, cleaning grates, whatever. So I'm going to throw these guys, look they don't even fit me. They're junk, which is perfect, perfect for what we're doing. So look at it. <laughs> so this is what I meant by push them all up. You're going to find some rocks and stuff in there. That just happens with Royal Oak. Just throw them away or throw them in your garden. Throw them in your lava rock collection. We don't have a long cook today at all. As far as uh, um, we don't have a very long cook as far as how long the meat's going to be on there and stuff for so we're, I'm actually not sure how long I'm going to cook for so I'm going to throw a little more in there do something like that um, you've seen some folks probably use the minion method um, you've probably seen charcoal baskets with dividers in it Daryl asked if we wanted dividers in it, and I mean, I guess it'd be kind of cool, but we don't really need it. This right here works perfectly fine. So there's a couple ways of lighting charcoal. Well, there's a handful. I mean, there's probably all kinds of time, uh, all kinds of ways to. There's a couple that I use. First of all, I will use our weed burner. You've seen that before. Some people call them a Texas matchstick. Um, etc etc again probably a bunch of names for it um, and there's wax paraffin cubes that's what we use um, so we do the wax cubes we have a weed burner that we use um, gosh well uh, we have charcoal chimneys so we'll use that as well maybe I'll do a separate video on the charcoal chimney but uh, for today I'm going to show you how to use the weed burner and I'm going to show you how to do the wax cubes so the weed burner is this guy right here I have all this stuff readily available because I, I do a lot of this so that is what that is obviously meant well I guess if it's not obvious I gotta stop saying it obviously because maybe you guys don't know but it's shaped like this so you can burn your uh, weeds like in your cracks of your concrete and stuff like that well some barbecue guy looked at that and said hey that's a hell of a way to start charcoal. So you just turn this on, turn your propane on. That's a propane tank for those of you who don't know. And this is the igniter. Okay? That was because I opened this up a little bit. So let's open this up. And we just started it up. You probably can't see it, but there's a lot of flame out of there, I promise. So if we go right to our charcoal. You can start it up this way. Hold it on there for a little bit. 
it'll get hot enough to uh, ignite a handful of them, especially with lump charcoal. Hopefully you can hear me. What I was saying was you'd want to hold it there for a little bit and uh, make sure that some are ignited. Like right now they're ignited. This thing will take right off. But, and it was only that quick. So um, now let me show you what a paraffin cube looks like, paraffin wax. Those are paraffin wax cubes. Hopefully I'm saying that right, paraffin. I don't know. Anyways, I graduated high school, promise. So that's what they are. It's just a little wax cube that's flammable, not, of course, combustible, but flammable. So what I'll do is, I gotta be careful because I just lit that up. But, I'll put that down in there somewhat. Let's get you over here. Look at this. Readjusting the camera on the fly. That. There you go. See how it's down in there a little bit? And then I will put some stuff around it. Obviously, you can't bury it completely because you need to get to it to light it. And then I walk over here. Grab my handy dandy lighter. Fire it up. That's all it takes. Thing takes right off. Okay, and then you bury it. Something like this. All right, and you know, fill some holes in, whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, you probably hear me say this a million times. You'll develop your own habits, etc., etc. You may think it went out, but it didn't go out. So we obviously just lit this up a couple different ways. Uh, I'm gonna go shut it up right now. Obviously being cautious, since I know there's hot stuff in there. Um, and that's it for that. So this particular model of smoker, yours can be different, uh, but not really. They all work the same, okay? I mean, fire's fire, needs oxygen to burn. So with that being in there, it needs some sort of airflow through there, okay? So whether you're smoking on a Weber Smoky Mountain, um, whatever the case may be, this happens to be a vertical cabinet smoker, all right? We're gonna open up our intake all the way and open up our exhaust all the way. And with that said, so let's see if you can see that up there. Here, exhaust, open up all the way, okay? So with that being done, now you have good draft through there. So draft, because heat rises, you got heat in there with your charcoal and stuff, that's naturally gonna start drafting, okay? You're gonna have air coming in here and you're gonna have air going out the exhaust. So hopefully that makes sense, should. It's not, not that complicated. Um, this particular smoker is a reverse flow cabinet smoker. We won't get into that too much because that's not what this video is about, but um, just so you know what we're cooking on today and what we're starting up here. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to watch this. This tells me everything I need to know. This tells me the internal temperature of my cabinet. This is my cooking chamber, okay? So if this may look a little foreign to you, this is the charcoal area we just saw. With all that's in there is a basket. That's got our charcoal on it. It has a way of, the way it's built, has a way of heat coming up. It goes down and out. The exhaust right here. I know down and out sounds kind of weird. Don't worry about any of that stuff. What you're worried about right now is this is the intake. That is the exhaust. We've got air coming in across our coils, feeding our fire with oxygen. And since heat naturally rises, it uh, has a natural draft out of the cooker. All right, that's all you need to worry about. So with that said, this cabinet's going to get hotter and hotter and hotter. So as it does, this is going to come up. Of course, right? Makes sense. So as it does, I'm gonna keep my eye on it because today we're, we're cooking around 275. So I can tell you right now, the next thing I wanna do is when this gets to about 200 degrees, I'm gonna start shutting this down first. This is the intake. I'm gonna start shutting the intake down first. Right now we have it wide open because we wanna get that fire hot enough to um, get it up to the temperature it needs to run at, okay? so. Right now, the fire is not there, so as we, as this naturally drafts, it's going to burn more and more charcoal. It's going to start spreading out, 
and at some point in time it's going to be burning enough charcoal to have this cooker at 275. Plus, we have a lot of metal right here, even though it's 75 degrees out today, we have a lot of metal right here that needs to get up that warm too. So it's kind of doing double duty. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting hot and growing the fire, but at the same time, with that fire growing, everything else is getting warm inside the cooker and um, outside, I mean, even. But uh, this is insulated, so um, the outside doesn't get very hot at all, um, if at all. So again, once this hits 200 degrees, I'm gonna start shutting this down because I wanna get ahead of the charcoal. So what I mean by that is, I'm sorry, I know this is a lot of information, but uh, just trying to throw it all at you, why not? That's why you tuned in, right? So what I mean by getting ahead of the charcoal is if I leave this open, like I was telling you, that fire is growing, right? So if it grows too much, it grows out of control, well, now it's gonna grow too much to be as low as 275, okay? So now it's gonna be at 300, 350 is where the fire is gonna be. So in order to get this at 275 and keep it at 275, I need a fire that's capable and only capable of cooking at 275 or 250, 200, whatever you cook at, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Well, there's a saying in Michigan, if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. There's the weather. So we uh, ran in the garage and got out of the uh, rain. So just to recap real quick, guys, we started our charcoal. I showed you two different methods, paraffin wax and wax cube and a weed burner, okay? Slid the charcoal basket in, shut the door. Same thing you would do with a drum, you would set your charcoal basket in, you could light it inside, you could light it outside. Um, same thing with the Weber, Weber Smoky Mountain, you could light it inside. Um, light your thing, build your, if it's a Weber Smoky Mountain, you're gonna have to build it, put your grates in it. If it's a drum, you're gonna have to put your grates in it. Um, several different ways, several different smokers let you figure that out. But that's what I'm gonna do with this one. I'm gonna slide my basket in, I'm gonna shut it, I'm gonna open my intake all the way, and I'm gonna open my exhaust all the way. And when I do that, I'm letting, that, letting a draft, natural draft, build up. The hotter that fire gets, the more of a draft it's gonna get, okay? So with that said, uh, I'm gonna let my temperature get up around where I wanna be. Um, the more you cook, the more you'll figure out what that is, the more you'll figure out how close to the target temp you can get without going over. Um, some people go over anyways before they put a big old slab of cold meat on their pit. Something to think about. Anyways, and that's about it. So I'm gonna slide this, I'm gonna slide my intake down, shut, and I'm gonna shut this, I don't know, one third of the way closed. And it'll run like that at 250 all day long until it runs out of charcoal. And then it'll probably stay at 200 for however long. <laughs> Thing runs really efficiently. But again, if you got a Weber Smoky Mountain or a drum or any other kind of charcoal, um, besides a like gravity fed, that's a little different. But I can show you how to fire one of them up too. Maybe throw me a comment. And if you want me to show you how I fire up my big gravity fed cooker, I can show you how we do that too. So anyways, that is how I do it, and that's how I recommend doing it. Um, I appreciate you guys watching Tips and Tricks. Enjoy your week, and I'll see you Sunday.